Welcome to Bethy Life, Jeff. I'm so glad I'm finally getting to crush on you. I've been waiting for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flattered to be asked. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I loved your photo shoot at the hotel. It was so great. And I loved your outfits and everything was so it was great. It was a fun day. It was a fun day. So let me get right to it. How did you and when decide to get into journalism? It's actually kind of a funny story. I was in third grade. Uh-huh. Uh, the teacher was Mrs. Gray. <laughs> And uh, we were making Valentine's Day cards for our moms. And uh, um, she sort of offhandedly mentioned that it would be great to have a poem to be in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, uh, in the card. And so I wrote a poem, uh, you know, appropriate for a third grader, not, not great literature, but, uh, uh, but I was proud of it. And um, I actually snuck in at recess and put the poem on the teacher's desk. And um, I was actually... She came back in and she, after recess, and she picked up the poem and she said, oh my goodness, what's this? And, uh, and at first I thought, am I gonna get in trouble for having been in the building during, uh -huh. during recess? And then she said, this is really good. And so then I claimed it. So then I was like, I, it had been anonymous, of course. Um, <clears throat> and she said it was a really good poem. And so I said, yes, I snuck in during recess and left a poem. And, uh, and she suggested that all the other kids use my poem in their, their Valentine's Day card for their mom. And, uh, and, she, uh, uh, and from that day forward, I had decided I was going to be a, a poet when I grew up and got big. But sometime around junior high, my dad said, um, I think what you mean, instead of poet, you mean journalist? <laughs> because that's actually something you can major in in school. And, and get paid and, for. And get paid something. And, uh, and journalists are slightly less likely than poets to drown themselves in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so th I, from that point forward, I decided, so really, really as far back as I can remember almost, I wanted to be involved in some kind of writing. That's an amazing story. So now you went to New York before Houston. Tell us a little bit about that. I went to graduate school at Columbia, and I wound up staying up in New York for many years. I was lucky enough to have a job for a couple of years as the deputy news editor for Entertainment Weekly. Oh, that's fun. Uh, among other things, but uh, um, a little piece of my, of my heart is in New York, and, and uh, I learned how to make magazines there. That's amazing. I bet that was fun working for Entertainment Weekly. It was, Never. A, it was a fun ride. So then what happened after that? Well, um, the short story is I uh, uh, moved home, moved home to Louisiana, where I'm originally from, mm -hmm. um, and uh, was recruited home to, uh, to start a newspaper there and after a short while there and I loved being home in Louisiana for a minute I thought I was gonna die there like I <laughs> I'd made it back home um, but I began to miss glossy paper and I began to miss a bigger city right and I almost went back to New York um, had some opportunities uh, that came my way at that time but something interesting happened here I was I was uh, I had an opportunity to talk to people about starting a magazine here uh -huh. um, and uh, I came to, and, and the Modern Luxury Corporation recruited me to Houston and uh, I thought you know what I'll why not I, I, New York's still there I can yeah. go, I can go to Houston for a minute and see what that's all about and uh, almost immediately fell in love and uh, you know up to that point I probably hadn't been in any job longer than a couple of years at a time um, but uh, uh, I really felt connected with the city and, and, and enjoyed and the idea that I could do that kind of work at that level work for a beautiful magazine in a big city yeah. and still be kind of close to home right was a win big, win was a big deal for me well you did a great job with Houston Modern Luxury so that then led to city books so yes. what made you decide you were going to go off on your own and start your own magazine, which takes guts. I think a lot of people uh, at some point want to do their own thing and yeah. want to and want to <laughs> you know, hang a shingle and, and, and be the master of their own destiny. You know, as it, it, is, is much fun as I had with Modern Luxury and as good a, an experience as that was, very proud of what we did together with the team at the time. And mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it, was the, it was the market leader, I mean, almost immediately, uh, yeah. the magazines. It was a, it was, and I was proud to be a part of something that was clearly so successful and mm -hmm. so popular. But ultimately, it was a corporate, corporate entity. I, I, I did not have the ultimate autonomy that I, I really wanted to produce the magazine that I thought Houston deserved. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that were happening at that time as I was beginning to think about going out on my own were, uh, uh, you know, uh, we were a, a, a city that fared really well through the recession. You know, we, the, the economic strength of Houston it was on display for all the world. Uh, our, our dining scene exploded, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, at that time. Um, when uh, when uh, I was doing uh, uh, thinking about City Book, or when I first started doing Modern Luxury, um, there was one 
James Beard award-winning chef uh, 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 working in Houston at that time. Tonight, if we were going to go out to dinner, mm -hmm. we'd have our choice of at least four no James Beard award-winning chefs working in Houston kitchens tonight. So the, the food scene exploded. The art scene uh, uh, exploded. We became known uh, far and wide as the most diverse city yeah. in the country. That's a, that's a, fairly, sure. new, uh, a fairly new thing. For sure. Um, and so all these great things were happening. We were on number one on so many best lists. Do you remember mm -hmm. that period of time yeah. when it was just Houston was just coming into its own, and it mm -hmm. was very clear. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, I was limited in, what, in my ability to cover that and to reflect that in a in a magazine. And so, to, in order to do the kind of magazine that I wanted and, and uh, that I felt that the city uh, uh, deserved, I needed to I needed to take a leap and go out on my own. And that's kind of where a city book came from. So uh, our next question was going to be how did what sets you apart? I'm thinking you're going to say we focus on Houston. Yes. We're uh, uh, we're from cover to cover from the, from the first page to the last. Every every advertiser is is of Houston uh, and every piece of editorial content, every image, every word. Um, we're and uh, I'm there's some great magazines in Houston and yeah. uh, proud to be in in the competitive set with them. We're the only one that's exclusively oh, focused. Really? On, oh, really? Only one. Really? That's exclusively focused on Houston. Tell me, um, in doing this magazine, what have you learned about this city? Because I'm sure you have learned a lot more about our city having to own and publish a magazine that reflects Houston. What have you learned? You know, I think I relearned something. I think I, there's something that I always heard about Houston, and I and I kind of accepted it, even though I hadn't fully experienced it myself. And going through this experience of being a business owner, uh, uh, going out on my own with some great partners, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, 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 you know, they always said about Houston, it, it's a place where it doesn't quite, it doesn't matter as much as other places who your parents are, yeah. you know, who, who you know, who you know, where you're from. Yeah, it, you know, it, 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 it's true in a lot of cities. I think, especially some other southern cities, you really sort of have to, you know, be in the right family and know the right mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. to, to, to really get in the door. In Houston, they always said, if you have good ideas and and you're kind of a decent person and you join the community and, and, and you work hard, you can be successful. And uh, I couldn't agree more with that. And that's what I've, and that's, and, I, and I've learned that through the City Book experience, I've definitely learned that to be true. Yeah, yeah. And you probably have learned, because I experienced this in my blog, there's no end to people and things and places to profile in the city. It's, it's, Every time I think, oh, I'm going to run out of material, I don't. And I know you have the same thing. So tell us you've got a September issue coming out very soon. Yes, we, uh, our September issue will be out on August 15th. Oh. Um, so right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, September is kind of it's the it's the it's the most magazine-y magazine we put out. It's September issue is always for all for most magazines. Uh -huh. That's the that's the big fashion issue. That's the one of the biggest issues of the year, and uh, we're just full speed ahead. We're we're um, that's so exciting. Pr producing a, be wait. a beautiful uh, uh, fashion shoot uh, focusing on both men's and women's fashion. Uh -huh. I don't want to tell, give away too many of the details, right. but uh, but we're going into a, a very sort of classic storied old space that. Um, it won't be around much longer. We're going to be one of the last people in and give you a, a, a sort of a long last look at a Houston classic uh, oh, through the lens wonderful. of this beautiful fashion story, among other things. We're, yeah. It's also an issue where we focus on, on uh, what we call Made in Houston. So it's a big portfolio of beautiful products and beautiful things that are exclusive to Houston, Made in Houston, everything from high tech to beautiful wow. you know, artisan things. You know, I've told you this before, because how old is City Book now, about a year? Uh, two years. Oh, the, two the years? The September issue will be our two year anniversary well, issue. you know, my age time flies. Um, I know I've told you this before that when I read your magazine, I learn something new about Houston every time. So it sounds like this September issue is going to be really informative I and think interesting. To your, I think to your point, I mean, this is it's 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 not just a, any any city will, will have, produces interesting people, interesting stories. Uh -huh. But this is not just any city. It's yeah. one of the biggest cities. Yeah. It's the most diverse city. It's the city where people. I, this is kind of corny, but I think this is one of the one of the great cities of the world where yeah. people come to make their dreams come true because yeah. of what we discussed before. Yeah. You, you you don't have to have lived here all your life. You don't yeah. have to have parents that were that were well known. You can come and and, and plant your flag and do your thing. Right. And if you're legit and you work hard, and so. That brings, that in and of itself brings new energy. It brings new people. It brings new stories. Yeah. And uh, and uh, that's one of the one of the great joys of producing this magazine. 
Well, I can't wait. Uh, there's so much more information about you in your written interview. I love it. Uh, but I really wanted to focus on your magazine during this video interview so everybody would really get to know that. Everyone go out and get City Book. Please. So we're so glad you decided to come from New York and Louisiana and plant yourself here. So Happy to be thank here. You Happy so to be much. here with you today. Thank you for Yay. including me. That's a wrap. Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mwah.